Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus. I need it, guys. It was a long night. We had Hurricane Nicole rip through. Luckily, it was downgraded before it landed. It was about a hurricane, I think it was a Cat 1. So not too bad, 75, 80 mile per hour maximum winds or something, it wasn't that bad. Every once in a while you do have those micro tornadoes that come through that do more damage sometimes than the actual hurricane. So today I wanna to talk to you about something that I learned about how to not lose signal during a storm. And I was losing signal a lot. And not only losing signal, the unit itself, Starlink, was rebooting and then going back to like factory. I wanna show you what that looked like in just a second, but before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you want any more Starlink content, I've done about 80 or 90 videos so far, a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, what to buy, what not to buy, and why, which is even more important. So check those out. Look at that playlist after you're done watching this video. Also, if you enjoy this even in the least, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. That will help out a lot. And subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So what ended up happening is while the storm was going through, we were getting a lot of these brownouts. And if you don't know it, brownouts kind of shut the machine off for a split second and turn it back on, all right? It's kind of like an in and out, in and out. It's not a full blackout, it's a brownout. Anyways, when this happens, the unit will reboot. And now you'll be offline for a minute or two minutes for it to find the satellites and get itself all back in working order. And this happens every time there's a brownout. Now, the solution to this is very obvious, is to put your Starlink on a battery backup. Now, I normally do this, but I was doing a bunch of testing, and during that testing, I ended up taking the unit off the battery backup. Now, it gets a little bit deeper than that, all right? The version two Starlink, for some reason, the way they have it set up is to do a factory reset on it. In other words, it resets to ground zero, let's say back to factory defaults. Now, to do this with the Starlink version twos, it's kind of stupid. What you have to do is you have to unplug Starlink and plug it back in three times quickly. Hence the problem here, right? With the version ones, you actually have a reset button. Makes more sense, right? Anyways, that's just the way they've created them. So what was happening is, is we would get these brownouts and they would happen in succession, one, two, three, sometimes one, two, three, four, these like in and out, in and outs. So what does Starlink do? Starlink is like, hey, you must be wanting to factory reset me. And it does. So every like couple of hours, not only is the Starlink down and we have no service, but when we pull up Starlink, this is what we get. Not good, right? And as you can see, now we have to reset the unit from scratch. So that means any kind of configurations that you have done, maybe you have your heating element off, or maybe you have it on auto, or maybe you have it on always on or whatever, you have to change that back. For me, I always have my Starlink Wi-Fi divided into two bands. So you have your 2.4 gigahertz band and your 5.0 gigahertz band. The reason I do that is so I can segregate traffic a little bit. So the important stuff will be on the 5.0, which is the faster speed, while the stuff that's not as important will be on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So I have to go into the unit itself to make those changes. And instead of being able to do that process through the web application, you actually have to use the phone. So check this out. So we have to go over to the Starlink application and then come down to where it says advanced. And when we click on advanced, 
we can now make that modification and split it off into two separate bands. So we have a bevel and maybe a bevel five. This way I know which is which, and now I can go ahead and use them accordingly and assign them to different applications. Now, you know, I've done a lot of testing on routers, but I've also tested a whole bunch of battery backups. And some of these battery backups, instead of giving a nice clean sine wave type of electricity, it's a little bit dirty. Some of them better, some of them worse, but I found one that was really reasonably priced that I picked up for it that's normally on the unit. And in a previous video, I told you which one that was. I'll find the link and I'll put it into the description below. It is by far the best battery backup that I've found so far. Clean and most importantly, affordable and small in size. I didn't want something like really big next to the Starlink router. I'm a person that have battery backup specific to different applications, different units. So instead of having one big massive battery backup that does everything, I segregate it off. So Starlink and the managed switch only is on one battery backup. The Unraid server is on another battery backup. This computer is on another battery backup. That one, it's that's just the way I do it. I like to kind of segregate things off so when one battery goes bad and the thing just goes south, not everything is affected, okay? That's just the way I do things. Anyways, in the description below, I'll put that link. I'll go find it from one of my previous videos, but I'll put it down there for you. And I'll also put it in the pinned comments. So the bottom line here is that if you're using a Starlink version two, especially, and you're having brownouts or the power goes in and out three times consecutively, understand that all of your settings on your Starlink will be wiped out. It will factory reset itself, reboot, and then you will have to go and reset everything, all right? Which is kind of a pain. So always put that Starlink on a battery backup. Number one, you won't have to go through this problem Number two, if you just have a simple brownout, just one instead of three consecutively to factory reset it to default, you won't be stuck with no internet for a minute or two while it reboots and then reacquires and all the rest of this stuff. You will always be online. So always have that battery backup on your Starlink. And plus, it'll give you a little bit more peace of mind. Let's say if a storm rolls through and you get hit by lightning, at least hopefully that battery backup will take the brunt of it instead of your equipment. It's just a smart thing to do. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have, please consider throwing this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Subscribe to the channel, as always say. And, and. If you just want to say thank you, there's a thank you button down below, which is kind of cool. Thank you so much, YouTube, for providing that. Or even better, just simply become a member of the channel. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for getting another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.